You're listening to Radio Derbyshire. And I'm Dickie and the time is 6am. The bank holiday weather forecast is hot, hot, hot. Only umbrellas this weekend you'll need is to guard against those upper temperatures of 40 degrees. Rain chances will increase slightly by midweek. Heck, we don't care about next week's weather as we live in the glorious county of Derbyshire where the sun always shines. This morning we have a shout out to Local Histories Productions and Theodore Films who are filming a documentary on dry stone walling in Derbyshire. The name of the production is If Walls Could Talk. So good luck with the weather you guys as I put the request to the Greek god Apollo for the sun and light to keep you you happy to all you dry stone wallers out there dave goulder is singing one for you these dry stone walls right i'm off now i'll see you later be safe these miles of dry stone walls that hold in plowed ground fields. and why i became a dry stone waller is when i was a, a child I, on the farm and then I, I used to go out at nights and weekends walling for other farmers and I took it up from there and when I packed up farming in the 80s I took it up professionally to get my qualifications and this is where I am today. In Cumberland they built me On hills that surely must have built them Through broom and juniper And stunted lane Two thousand feet over with just a tarpaulin cover They sat through wind and rain And waited for the spring In Aberdeenshire Valley Trevor Rag is in the minority. He could almost be considered a hidden industry on his own with many years of experience. Both as practitioner and trainer, he views dry stone walling as both craft and science. But whichever way one looks at it, the preservation of its heritage and looking forward to the future are elements crucial to the survival of dry stone walling. When you look at the stones, they've all got different shapes and it's putting them all together and you're like creating a picture and and when you stand back and look at it you can see all those shapes nicely built together and I would call that the art in tri-stone walling. Through broom and juniper and stunted lean two thousand feet over with just a tarpaulin cover they sat through wind and rain and away to fall the spring Throughout Trevor's long career as a dry stone waller, he's come across many strange and wonderful oddities, secrets that have been hidden by the walls. I found the remains of an old leather clog, a little one, a child's clog. So just these bits and pieces of leather that we put together. And I think for luck, people you would put a child's uh, shoe in the wall. So we very carefully put that back in the wall, but decided that perhaps we ought to add one from the current day into the wall. So across the road was one of the oldest families in the village. I think there were four generations that had lived in that particular house. So they gave us one of their child's shoes, which we put in the wall, a little shiny patent leather shoe, which is now hidden in that wall for the next wall or in a hundred or 200 years or whenever time to find. Whether it will last as long as the leather clog, I'm not quite sure, but who knows. But the most exciting thing I found was a, a live hand grenade and I was teaching on a farm near Matlock and we had to call in the bomb squad. They had to come up from London, cordon the area off, search the whole area and then remove the live ammunition. Every wall is different and every wall can be the shape different. Most of the walls are built what we call like a capital A, like that. And it's the construction, how you place the stone, crossing the joints. You've got the two stones on the outside and the, what we call the arting. Those are the small stones in the middle of the wall. They're just as important over the construction, keeping it nice and solid. You swear the hills were edged with broken granite lay. When 
Stone Picton and Viking Cook Stone pages from some prehistoric book Of sandy flagstone on the Hawkeney field They lingered a while and Left history in the island This is what water, wind And time and toil reveal If you look at this stone it's a bit unusual and it's got a face and a lot of walls have had stones that have come out of old buildings and have been reused as for a dry stone wall and like this is a good example and this has come from the Norman period out of a Norman church in this area <laughs> But dry stone walls have a fascination all of their own and win the admiration of those enjoying the countryside. What sort of hidden meanings do the walls have? Dry stone walling is problem solving, it's a jigsaw and you're constantly challenging yourself and your abilities in putting that wall or that sculpture or that structure together so it it offers so many facets there's never a, a day when you know two days are never the same every job's different every stone's different that you pick up it's never repetitive um, and for me that is the the challenge and that's the the thing that i enjoy that, that's what makes me want to keep coming back to it. As you can see, it's a stone that I've gone and found in a dry stone wall. And as you can see, it's scooped out like a saucer and that is where they used to hide the money in the dry stone walls and this is an example how it works say that is that that stone there and that stone there are higher than that one then we put a stone sitting on that one sitting on that one and this one here is a lot smaller and this is what we call the draw stone and we pull this out and we put a hand in to put the money in or take it out we put this back nobody knows any different where the money's been hidden it's what we call the hole in the wall and there is a story to this one there was two brothers on this farm and one of them looked after the money and what happened he went and died first and the other brother didn't know where the money was hidden and that is perfectly true story and quite a lot of farms in the area do find these in the walls when the, some wallers are, are taking rebuilding the walls so they are quite common and it was a safe way of hiding your money <laughs> your oyster as a dry stone wall it's amazing how you can either travel the world and do all sorts and all build all sorts and you could build sculptures buildings houses field walls um, parks walls garden walls or you could just stay in a field in the peak district and not travel further than five miles from your home you know it's it's a, a very diverse career it's what you make it really so what kind of opportunities does dry stone walling hold for the average person willing to give it a try? Rob and Bridget, how did you get started? I used to live in Derbyshire, moved away and I just love the walls and the patterns they make and for a birthday my husband here bought us a weekend um, of walling, a, a, a beginner's walling weekend. It gave us an insight into what satisfaction you could get from actually building something and seeing the results. And it was great satisfaction, wasn't it? It was great, great, because I 
worked outside or started my working life outside uh, civil engineer and as I progressed I got more and more stuck inside and this walling experience with Trevor just suddenly just opened the doors up that you can work back outside and it was we, we were hooked. The fascinating thing with it is you're always learning. It's a different thing, different walls, different situations. Different stone. Different stone. Mm. That's, that's the big thing. Yes, we worked as a team both walling and in competitions as well, which we found were very useful as well around mm. the country. Um, and that was done as a team effort yes. initially. When we were learning uh, at the beginning and then we sort of split off and did individual competitions as yeah. well. Yeah. It's a diverse career which followers share with enthusiasm. How you place the stone on the wall is very, very important. Each stone may have a place in the wall, but you have to put the stone in the right place. Um, by that I mean in simple terms, the larger stones go at the bottom and the smaller stones at the top. Also, the wall narrows as it rises, uh, and that's to create stability. The face of the stone, which is the part of the stone you see in the wall, needs to follow that line as it comes up the wall, otherwise the wall just looks odd. The sort of qualities that I think you need are patience, um, you, you know, it's not a it's not a fast paced business. You know, you you best you could really hope for probably in a day is a three meters of wall. So you're not going to get if you get onto a big job, you're not going to get a lot of a lot of stone up. You know, on a through a week, it's going to take you a long time to make progress. So patience is a big thing, and then just you know perseverance as well. I think you know just to keep going because it's hard. You know, there's there's days when it's really mentally difficult to look you know where you've got to go and and to keep walling you know if you've got a 200 meter job to do it's uh and you look at it at the start of the job it, you, you're looking at a long way off in the distance thinking when am i ever going to get there and then you know you you've got to you know have a desire to want to build properly and to to do a good job all the time so um yeah it's um i think those are the sorts of things that you'd be looking for is dry stone walling a craft? Trevor thinks so. I would say the art in dry stone walling has really changed in this last 20 years. When I started, it was just building straightforward farm walls. Now we're getting to build more garden walls and what they're wanting in the garden walls are features. Also, you'll see us perhaps on the television doing the garden it's on the RHS shows etc and I think that's where walling has really moved forward we're doing more fancy work garden work and less farm walls what they need to be built up as well so we're losing the history and the heritage of dry stone walling so we need a combination of both what I see the future it's going a little bit more decorative in the gardens. I think this is, there's probably two two aspects to be promoted. There's there's the, the environmental side of it. You know, there's a lot of life that goes on and lives inside a wall. Um, it's it's quite aesthetically pleasing as well when you see a nice wall built in the environment and it's it's recently been rebuilt. It's absolutely well, it's a thing of beauty as far as I'm concerned. Anyway, so uh, yeah, and the, there's also the fact that if you build a wall and you invest in building a wall, you've got at least a hundred years worth of um, boundary. Well, Jerry, what's the importance of the the Millennium Wall project? And how was it started? Well, the Millennium Wall was the brainchild of a dry stone waller from Derbyshire called John Bound. Now, he's a member of our local Derbyshire Dry Stone Walling Association. And he, together with his comrades there, decided that the Millennium Wall would be an excellent idea for the National Stone Centre. 
The idea was to start with that they would get six sections of dry stone wall from around the country to have an outdoor museum of dry stone walling. When the other dry stone walling associations around Britain found out what was proposed, they all wanted to be involved as well. So we now have 18 sections of dry stone wall from all around the country. The significance is that there is nowhere else in the country where you can see this type of collection of dry stone walling. It is unique, not only in Britain, but around the world as well. The interest goes not only from the geological point of view, in that more than 80% of the different types of rock in Britain are represented in the dry stone wall here, but also the environmental aspects of dry stone walling too. Not only in the construction, in the sense that the stone doesn't move very far to build the wall, and there is no cement or mortar used to construct the wall, it is purely done with stone itself available on site. And also, the second aspect of the environmental side of it is that it forms a new habitat for creatures and animals, and indeed, as we can see here, lichen on the stone itself. So it's very beneficial for the environment. What kind of person is a dry stone waller? And what makes people give up lucrative jobs to follow up a trade like dry stone walling? Are they happier people? Is there room for young people? Or is it just a mature person's thing? Dry stone walling naturally lends itself to a person who can show patience, attention to detail, and a, an ability to uh, do problem solving, really. Y you can't do them quickly. Everyone's different. The stones are always going to be different and the locations sometimes present quite a few challenges. So to be successful at it, you have to learn how to overcome these, to persevere, and just to, uh, to keep uh, plodding along. Speed follows, quality follows, and uh, soon your own reputation pre presents opportunities to uh, build um, work within your own area and further afield. What does Trevor look for in a wall when deciding on its history? Its history, I would say not perhaps just standing back, I have got to look a little bit more in detail, looking about the line of the wall, if it's in a perfectly straight line, that is telling me more how old the wall is. If they're in a straight line, that's more of the Enclosures Act on the 1740s. And if they're all iggledy-piggledy, all funny shapes, they can be going there a lot older. And if you, the wall's close to a village, they're just like a large garden, and they're known as the run rig system. They are the very oldest close to a village, because one of those would have been sufficient for family to live on in those days in the 1600s, etc. I think right now, if you drove around Derbyshire, South Yorkshire, surrounding uh, County Sea, you will see people repairing dry stone walls. They're invariably solitary people. They might not necessarily be a member of a dry stone walling association, but they'll, be, they'll still be doing the same job at this time. It's just almost a hidden industry. I think it's a shame it's still seen as something which is shrinking. It's still seen as almost an older person's profession and so on. I know loads of young people who do walling. And I think we are missing a trick sometimes in marketing ourselves, in not getting the message out there that it's a it's a great thing to get involved in, whether you're doing it as a volunteer, just to repair a wall on your own premises, or whether to do it for a living. Why and how? Has this profession changed your life? I'm a lot poorer financially. <laughs> <laughs> but I have to say, in, in terms of uh, uh, mental health, physical health, just a joy of life, it has improved immeasurably. It really, really has. Before I became a waller, I would sometimes wake up in the morning and think, oh, God, got to get through another day or... Can I pull a sickie? Is there any way I don't have to go into work? You know, I'd look forward to weekends, holidays, etc. And it wasn't that I was unhappy at my job, it just felt a grindstone. And that nine to five, nine to five, nine to five type, type thing. What I have now is I have a flexibility in my work. So if it's a glorious day like today, I can be up at six and out, walling early. Where does a person start with a dry stone wall? Assessing the stone, what you've got in the wall, how you're going to build it, and then taking it all down. You start in the bottom with a trench. You don't build it on soil. 
topsoil, you get down to the subsoil where, where it's nice and solid. Because if you don't, your wool's going to sink. And that's no good because of the weight. Start off with your big, large foundation stones. And then you start grading your stone the next size up. And then sometimes you'll have a stone, what we call a through stone, which is a long one that goes right the way through the wall, tying both sides of the wall together. And then what we call on the second lift above that are the smaller stones and your wall gets narrower to the width of your copers at the top. And then you put the copers on. That's acting like a through at the top of the wall, sealing both sides of your wall together again. do you become a dry stone waller? I'm driving to work and I'm noticing ev everything. I'm up, you know, you can make the most of a day. If it's absolutely bucketing with rain, then go home a bit early. Um, but I think, I mean, most people will understand and appreciate that being outdoors is therapeutic in itself. And it's certainly where I find my peace um, is, being, is being outside. And and I think the happiness, my, my partner has said, you're so much happier being working outdoors. Um, and so it's changed that way. And I put a value on that. And that to me, being happy in my job, I don't think of it as my work. And some people, a lot of my friends are talking about retirement now and going, oh, I can't wait to retire. I've got retirement plans and then I can. I don't see this as work, it's pleasure. And so therefore, you know, my retirement will be when I can no longer lift a stone, not because I've got an age coming up and I'm thankful to stop, because I love doing what I do every single day. I love building the walls and I love being in the company of wallers. I mean, it's probably seen as a bit of a male dominated profession, which it is, but there are more and more women coming into the profession now. And, and I don't see any reason why a waller can't be a, a man or a woman. I think it's a genderless pr profession, to be honest. And I think, you know, a lot of people, I'll often get comments of uh, people will sort of come along, oh, uh, walling, that's lovely. And they'll, I've had quite a few where they'll come around and go, oh my God, it's a woman. It's like, yep, <laughs> I am. And uh, it, it's interesting because people will immediately say, oh, it's heavy work. How do you manage to lift the big stones up? And it's like, well, the big stones shouldn't be up there. They should be down there on the bottom. And there's always means and ways, you know, I can, climb stones up little steps or whatever I can't perhaps do the same as some of the guys but there's always a way around stuff there's always a way and it's not stopped me doing anything so far well it can be really frustrating at times I've wanted to throw my hammer on the floor or throw stones at things at times but uh, I think generally when you start working you you kind of lose yourself in what you're doing I think you have to concentrate so hard on what you're doing at the end of the day, any exercise is good for you. It uh, releases endorphins, makes you feel better. I can come along having had a particularly bad morning, start building a wall and the world's good again. It's exercise, you're outdoors, you're grounded literally, you've got challenge. It's like a huge jigsaw puzzle with no one answer and you've got to work that out and your attention focuses on that and I, I find it very, very relaxing overall. There's something quite nice about the fact that you lose yourself in your own, in your work and, you know, a day can go past. I mean, I've got the radio on when I'm working and you suddenly think, oh God, you know, it's, uh, well, for me, it's pop master at half 10, which means I usually stop for a cup of tea. But uh, yeah, you know, you sort of, the day will flash past and, you know, it's sunny outside now. It's lovely, you know, and you, sometimes you, you just can't believe your luck that you're out in somewhere beautiful working away and, uh somebody's paying you to be there as well you know as an art form when i first started i didn't think uh, i didn't i thought it were more as a craft when i started and i was getting into something that my father was doing but um over time to and, and getting involved in actual sculpture with andy goldsworthy that's when it, it it feels more like an art an artwork and when you get back to your own work when you're not working with an artist you have inspiration and ideas 
not copying the artist of course, but you have uh, ideas to do uh, on in people's gardens and stuff. I mean a lot of people, uh, like walkers who go by, they say it's like an artwork. I mean it is, uh, but like when I first started it didn't feel like an artwork because uh, it was it was a country craft and I just started started out but uh, I'm like uh, one of the lucky wallers really to be able, to have been able to work for an artist and uh, and turn my craft work into art which is uh, it's quite a nice feeling it, it, it is very hard work nowadays and um, I think in this uh, technological age uh, Dry stone walling is probably bottom on a lot of young people's list as a, as a, as a, um, uh, as a job, you know, for job security. It's uh, it's like anything. It's a craft, and it takes uh, time to learn. But if they, if straight away when they've tried it, they don't like it, they don't, they're not giving themselves enough time to really get, get into it. Most of the time, people that are interested in doing dry stone wall, you know, new people interested it are people looking for a job change or like looking for just another feather in the cap after retirement or uh, yeah there's just not enough young people but you know with hope places like uh, the eco center and walls for the future uh, they'll, uh, they'll bring bring some new blood in yeah it's good fun it's quite interesting the uh, every stone's different so it's, it's a good exercise for your brain as well as your hands so dry stone walling counts as a quarter of your DOV. You do an expedition, voluntary, a skill and a physical uh, for three months. And one of those three you do for six months. Uh, so a skill, so dry stone walling counts as a skill and you do an hour a week for three months. And you, all you do is you get someone to, over, to assess you and see whether you've done it. And write a little paragraph as to show, to, uh, show that They've also seen what you've done as well as you've shown. I'm not sure. I think a, a lot of people are moving to cities now. So a lot of kids grow up in cities and many of them don't see dry stone walls for a very long time. And uh, so so that's probably the main reason as well as a lot of people have stopped dry stone wall building because it's obviously takes a long time and um, it's not expensive, but it takes a long time versus putting up a fence, which is a lot easier. So a lot of farmers nowadays just put up fences, not dry stone walls. Just the process of picking stones and seeing whether they work or not, and just seeing how uh, how how you build the wall is quite impressive. To take a load of stones and without any structure, put them put them and make them stand together is quite amazing to do. So what I really uh, enjoy about dry stone walling is the actual building and putting the stones in the wall and seeing how they fit and how to make a wall stand without any support or any cement or any, like a brick wall has a cement, but just some walls to be able to make them stand on their own without anything but bits of stone is really enjoyable and really amazing. Uh, well, first of all, we learn the general structure of a dry stone wall. So uh, foundation stones, you've got your building stones, through stones, coping stones. Um, Always lengthways in the start your building stones. Good friction packing, so you've got a nice strong wall. I like being outdoors, fresh air, things like that. So it could be definitely an option, yeah. So if the rain's heavy, what are you going to do? Carry on working. <laughs> well, as we talked about finding unusual things in the wall, this is one of the ones that we found on a job here in the village of Kirkiaton. And it's this wonderful face that's been carved on the back side of a stone of a, a man with a beard. And it's, it's a beautiful carving. And to me, it looks like it's been done by somebody who knows how to carve stone. What it represents, we're not quite sure, although it's quite green mannish. Um, but it was on the back of a building stone. And you can see here the, where it's been dressed. And then at one time again, it's been painted. So clearly the, this has been the outside of the stone and then inside, unbeknownst to anybody, certainly when it was in this outbuilding, has been this beautiful carved face. So why it's been turned round and hidden inside the wall, we're not really quite sure. Um, and one of the things we've been told is that in Ireland, when the early Christians came over into Ireland and sort of the pagan religion was being um, overlaid, if you like, by Christianity, then what 
some of the pagans that would be worshipping um, uh, some of their gods, they turned the faces of the carvings round into the wall um, so that they could still go and worship their gods, but it would all be hidden. We can guess as to the story of this, but the true story or who carved it, we'll never know. One thing is for sure, it won't be hidden face into a wall anymore. We'll be keeping this face out, out for the world to see. It's a craft that's dying out unless we don't get some young wallers interested in taking it up. But it's uh, very important for the landscape around Derbyshire and well, all the north of England. <coughs> but I am worried that in about another 30, 40 years there will be very few wallers about. And uh, it's going to be a sad thing if, well, there's thousands of miles already want rebuilding that will never, ever get rebuilt. So it's quite sad in a way. But uh, we're trying to teach wallers round here, but getting no young interest whatsoever. Or very, very few, anyway. It is a science in a way, isn't it? You've got to use the, use the proper stuff in, in the area. But, I mean, walling's a lonely thing, really. I work, worked on my own for donkey's years until Jason come along. So uh, it's just hard work, but it's enjoyable work. In every linear metre of a wall, and about 1.2 high, there is a tonne of stone. And if you take four metres down and put that back in the day, that's eight tonne of stone through your hands in the day. And a lot of these young ones, they don't seem to want the hard work today. Not like I did when I was a younger, you thought nothing of it. So um, I can see it could die out in another 20 years if we're not careful. So we have got to really encourage some more young ones and now what a lovely job it is to be out in the countryside building walls well you can say well I've built that and I wish that will happen in the future with the young ones. It's really good for your karma wallers are very very solid people They're usually quite uh, strong got a lot of stamina very grounded because they're outside, they're working with nature, they're working with the seasons, they're out in the sunshine. And I think if you've got that contact with nature and the environment, then it's a really good basis for your personality and your character. It's very solid, yeah. <laughs> These mild, dry stone walls that hold in ploughed brown fields and kingly halls. The dead of centuries in hills of sand. The stones that bind them are proud as what lies behind them. And buried as the count is in this furious land. In Cumberland they built them On hills that surely must have killed them Through Brum and Juniper And stunted lean Two thousand feet over With just a tarpaulin cover They sat through wind and rain And away to fall the spring Aberdeen Chevaliers The fields were only open quarries The stone was gathered up And made to stand But with every ploughing You'd think It was stones they were sowing The walls grew fatter here Than any in the land built in courses of single stones the size of horses of glacial boulders without edge or face and if you could view them above with sun lighting through them you'd swear the hills were edged with broken granite lace
when Picton Viking took stone pages from some prehistoric book of sandy flagstone on the Hawkeny field. They lingered a while and left history in the island. This is what water, wind, and time and toil reveal. From Yorkshire's limestone dales, through Derbyshire to the coast of Wales, or Shetland's salty rocks to Devon lanes, just look and discover two walls that lean against each other. You'll never see them in quite the same way again.